Hi guys, welcome back. Todd here with Todd's World Home Show. And today I'm gonna to be installing a Tesla wall connector. And that's kind of like a charger. Your charger in your Tesla is actually built into the vehicle. So they call this a wall connector, even though some people call it a charger. Now, um, I was going to use my Tesla mobile connector when it arrived with the vehicle. But now in the future, some of the Tesla vehicles are not gonna be coming with the Tesla mobile charger pack unit and uh, I thought I was going to get that at first and then I was doubtful and now it seems that we are going to get it because we ordered our car in the middle of March of 2022 anytime after that uh, soon after that they're going to discontinue it but I figure I can use that mobile connector uh, keep it in the trunk or front of the car and then when we go on vacation up to our property in Kentucky we can use that mobile connector uh, along with this mobile connector adapter I purchased from Tesla directly that will attach to the mobile connector and replace the 15 amp plug. This is the uh, NEMA 1450 plug adapter for the mobile connector when it arrives with the vehicle. And I could use that here, but stay tuned. I'm gonna show you uh, why I chose uh, my options here that I'm gonna share with you today with the Tesla uh, wall connector and why then just use the mobile connector. And welcome back. So don't follow my advice. This is just for entertainment and information purposes only. If you really wanna get into electrical work, please hire a certified electrician like I did because I don't like to get into my breaker boxes myself unless it's to flip a breaker on and off. So I had this pre-installed. This uh, I can give you a little bit of information about, but not much. This is a 50 amp circuit here coming from a 60 amp breaker that an electrician added to my breaker box and added this NEMA 1450 socket outlet. So this is capable of delivering 50 amps. Now I added a second one up here as well that connects to this breaker box. Same deal. So I can actually charge two uh, EV vehicles in my garage at once if I want to because they are on separate circuits, separate breakers. And now uh, I'm gonna explain to you why I, I'm not using the mobile connector that comes with the Tesla. That's because that mobile connector uh, the max you can get amps from that mobile connector that's supplied with the vehicle is 32 amps and that will give you approximately 30 miles per hour that would be fine but like i said i want to take it with us when we go on vacations and trips so i want to keep it in the vehicle handy for wherever we might end up maybe at a friend or family's house or something like that and we need to charge an emergency we've got a way to do that so in this case i ordered the 500 dollar Tesla wall connector. Now I believe it's dropped down to $400 so you guys can get a deal on that. That was purchased directly from Tesla's website. And we're gonna be connecting this up today, but in a different fashion. Now if you connect the Tesla wall connector up directly to a line coming from a breaker, then you could get a max of 48 amps from your 50 amp breaker. But since we got it split here at the NEMA 1450 outlet, that's gonna max out at 40 amps you can draw directly by just plugging it in right there, which is what I'm gonna do because I did purchase this 50 amp cord, which is a 1450 NEMA plug on it with exposed ends, which we're going to connect to our Tesla wall connector today. So let's get at it. All right, before we start the install, let me just go over this again. If you use a regular plug, a 110 grounded plug that plugs into any normal, ordinary household outlet, you're gonna be able to get two to three miles per hour of charge into your EV Tesla. If you use a NEMA 1450 plug and use your Tesla mobile connector, you're gonna get a max 32 amps and that's gonna create 30 miles per hour charge on your Tesla, Model 3 and Model Ys. Now, if you use the Tesla wall connector directly wired to your circuit breaker box, you can pull a max 
48 amps, and that will give you 44 miles per hour on the Model 3 and Y. But what we're going to do is something unique here because we're going to use the Tesla wall connector, right? <clears throat> and turn it into kind of like a mobile wall connector because we can always unplug this. If we move if we move out of this house, we can just unattach the Tesla wall connector and unplug it and take it with us to our new home. So when we do this, we're gonna be able to draw a max of 40 amps. The Tesla wall connector can handle 40 amps, up to 48 amps. At 40 amps, what we're doing here today, we're gonna to get 37 miles per hour charged on our Tesla Model Y or 3 when we plug into this. So that's why I'm doing this method today because it's also something that you can move and take with you. Wow, look at that. Looks like a jewel. So here it is guys. Pretty good length cord that comes already attached to it with your uh, Tesla plug connector. Nice. You can hang around your wall connector like that, but I'm gonna do it in a different method because we're, we've got limited space where we're mounting this wall connector today. Wall connector guide. This will guide you through the process if you're not watching my video. All right, so I'm gonna be mounting mine just so you can follow along correctly. This is the back mounting plate. I've already taken it off the back of the Tesla wall connector and I'm gonna actually mount it right here. Whoops. That's a pretty heavy duty cord there. Mount it about right here and have, you know, of course, the mounting plate here and then our plug coming up here, only about five or six inches up. So I'm gonna have a top entry <clears throat> of this cord right here, five or six inches of this cord enter into the top here. So we can remove this top cap. Just pull that off, got a grommet there. So now this is open where we can run our cord, this cord through into the wall connector attachment areas. All right, I went ahead and pre-drilled my holes through the plastic mounting plate housing. And then I can go ahead and uh, drill the holes into the concrete here. And I'm doing three attachment holes. All right, holes drilled. Now, I'm gonna be using these, I think they're one, one and a quarter inch Tapcon concrete screws. I use these all over my Florida home when it comes to screwing into the outside concrete or stucco. They work well. I'm just gonna get them all kind of started first. Make sure the holes line up. Nice guys, step one finished. All right, most wall plates, outlets that you install usually have a gauge on how much uh, exposure you need on your connector uh, wire ends. And on this case, it's right here, strip length there. And I can mark that and go ahead and make my strip length or all of them the same. Let's see. Right about there. See that? Now, when you're connecting your wall connector like this with an outlet or a plug, I should say, 50 amp NEMA plug, you're not gonna be using the white lead white lead you'll just want to uh, don't un don't strip this part I'm just gonna take some black tape and wrap it around the end there and then wrap it 
around the, the outer housing of the cord like that. These are the three you're going to need, the black, green, and red. As stated in the instructions right here on the Tesla wall connector. And we're routing it coming in from the top, as in this illustration right here next to number four there. That's our routing, which we've already went over. So there you go. That's what we're going to do next. All right, I've got all my lead ends stripped, ready to be put in the connector. The white one, like I said, I'm not going to strip this. I'm going to tape this off and tape it back like that. It's not used with the Tesla wall connector. I use this Allen, Allen wrench tool. And I back these out. These are the screws that actually hold this pressure tight on the ends here and keep it connected in for all three of these wires. So I backed all these out. Now I just got to do my routing. I got my zip tie in here. They give you a zip tie with a little uh, attachment spot back behind your cord. Run your cord in and then zip tie it just to uh, tidy it up and keep it sturdy and keep it in place in case you have to ever access this again. It's safely tied in place. Now let's see if this cord is very thick and stiff. So. Take your time. You don't want to break this connector housing up here or anything, uh, bending it or shaping it. So take your time. Run it through, leaving the amount of cord we need left to plug in. And then I'm going to kind of shape it here if I can, just to make it easier to fit in the box here. Now my cords, looks like my ends are a little bit too long. Probably only needed about 15 inches. That still will be okay, looks like. So let me figure out which color goes where. We're coming in from the top, wrapping around, going into the bottom. So you want your green, red, then black. Double check that for me. We got green, red in the middle, and black. The black is over here by these uh, connector, wall connector plugs right here. So black is on this side, green's on the outside. So let's get to work. Put it up in the bottom there. I can see it kind of showing at the top here at the outlet there. Looks like I'm gonna have to put all these in at the same time. Make sure your leads you got stranded leads like this make sure they don't split apart or separate as you're pushing it up in there okay make sure there's none showing down here and we're tightening up onto our leads my garage automatic light just went out Nice, not really. I'm going to zip tie this right now. There we go. Go back to these, just check them at the bottom, make sure they're in there properly. And I'm gonna give another little bit of torque. Not too much, because this is a plastic housing here. Just want a good firm connection. Okay, now check here this the breaker is off to this plug I'm just gonna check to see how this looks with the 
extra cord here. Looks like that will work out pretty good as long as our faceplate goes on. And we'll do that next. All right, and we're back. Got it all in place. I had to remove half of the shelf below here just to get, you know, have the room to hang the cord and wrap it. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that coming up in just a moment here. But let's go ahead and see if this wall connector actually plugs in to the wall mount that we've wired. Yeah, it's plugged in. Now we gotta put our retainer screws on there. They come included with a wall connector. These little screws here, two in the top, two in the bottom. Looks like it takes a little Allen, it's an Allen head, it's an Allen wrench. Closer. Go right back here. Oh, there it goes. It fell into place now. Let's make sure this is pushed in tight and they should fall right into the hole. Screw hole. Let's do the other side. All right, we got it all connected and see here, we've got the space down here to keep the cord. And I know what you're saying. Hey, Todd. You're not gonna keep the cord like that, are you? No, I'm not just gonna leave it hanging down here like this. I did buy something else because I knew I wouldn't be able to hang it from the side here or wrap it around here. I wouldn't have the clearance with my garage door and, and fuse box right here. So I got this cord can wrap around this and the plug-in can hold right here, just like a fueling station, but we're gonna mount it down below here. So I'm gonna do that quickly. All right, it's gonna come down here and I'm gonna run the cord through this. It's capable of doing that. And I think I wanna get it as high as up as I can off the floor so I don't have to bend down as much, but I've only got so much room here and I don't wanna take a difficult rolling it through here. So I gotta watch out for that. And I'm centering between the shelf and the garage door fascia plate there. I think we'll put it right there. I'm just gonna level it up here. All right, now let's see how this works. Now, like I said, I'm gonna run this cord down through here just to get it over this way and keep the tension off of here. And this should fit over it. We'll see about that. And it does nicely. So, we got our cord there. Hang our charger right there. It's cool, it kind of hooks in there. So it's, it's kind of low for me, but you know, the main unit's up here. Make sure we can plug this in here. It's good. Cord comes down here, here's where we can store it plug into our new Tesla when we get it, neatly have it up there. All right, so that's it, project complete for today, guys. Now, hopefully soon, in the uh, next month or so, we'll have something nice parked next to this 2015 Corvette Stingray Z51 right over here, our new Model 3 Tesla long range. And I feel pretty comfortable with getting this installed because now I know once the car gets here, I'll always be able to charge at a rate of 
I believe, around 40 miles per hour of charge going into that Tesla Model 3 battery when we plug in. And I think it turned out great. Hey guys, I got so excited I forgot to show it to you with it powered on. So I did turn the breaker on in here and uh, I was like, man, I didn't check. Is it going to work? Do the lights work on it? And, it? and the lights do come on as it powered up and booted up. You can see the lights going up and down here, kind of like a rainbow effect. So we know we've got correct power going to this. And so you know we've got correct power going to this now and we're all set, ready for our Model 3. Now, just take this information that you saw today just as information. If you want to have this done correctly, make sure you hire a certified electrician to install this work and, and do what I did here today. But I feel comfortable in the house I'm living in that I pretty much safely got this installed. And the only thing left is to test it once we get our Model 3 in. Guys, thank you for tuning in again today to my channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Depths of my heart, we're dreamers. Okay.